Welcome to Ear Biscuits. I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. This week at the Round Table of Dim Lighting, we're going to be exploring the question, did our careers just peak? We are fresh off of a tour, a little mini tour. We went to St. Louis, Columbus, Washington DC, and Nashville. Um, and in Nashville, the venue was very uh, special because it was the Mother Church of Country Music, the Ryman Auditorium. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you just you just mentioned to me, and we, we translated it into the question of this episode. You said that y the thought did cross your mind. Is this is this the is this the peak of our career? Um, so, yeah, yeah, I think um, I think so. We want to we want to talk to you about the whole tour. Um, and I was but saying, I'm, I'm certain we will reflect on that specifically. P E E K peak. Not did our careers just like lean over and look around a corner at us? No, yes, that would be P E E K. Oh, that is what you meant. Yeah. Oh, but you're then, talking about P E A K? Yes. Or are you talking about P I Q U E peak? Not that. What What do you mean by P E E K? You do, you're just you're being humorous. I'm just doing some spelling humor. Okay, it's one of my favorite things to do on a podcast because <laughs> spelling humor goes really well, you know, in the, in the audio. I mean, I, I always look for a chance to spell peak, p i q u -E. three different ways, yeah. including that way. Okay, if your interest is peaked, just a little grammar lesson is p i q u e d. It's not p e a k e d, like. It was the peak of your interest. And if I peek around a corner and that peaks your interest, then that may be a peak moment for you. Right. Right. Yeah. And you know what, spelling's important. Um, so so we kinda wanna go through, uh, <laughs> spelling's important. It is. Put that on a t-shirt. I, I, listen, I watch, do you watch, do you watch your kids spell? Like, no, it sounds quite boring. No, like, have you ever like, Gone up hey kid, behind you mind if your I kid. Look over your shoulder and watch your spell while they like write a paper. I've read their papers. Yeah, you've yeah. never been with them when they were in the process of writing a paper. Now listen, I can relate to this because I become incredibly dependent on spell check. Yeah, but kids these days, man, like they got it bad. They, I mean, they 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 stumble over like the, and it's auto corrected for them. How else would you spell the? T H E E. T -H -E -A. That's also correct. E A. T H I Q U E. Your kids don't <laughs> no, know how to spell V? That's thick. <laughs> Man. <laughs> so we're going to step through a bunch of that. But um, one of the things that we know, you know, we don't, we don't, you don't have a lot of time in each town. We did four, those four dates over the course of five days. Yeah. So it's pretty aggressive. But you do find these little pockets of time to experience a little sliver. Of the of the locale, right. um, and one of the things that we've noticed that was that was across all of these cities. It's, I think it's something that's sweeping the nation, sweeping maybe the world. Of course, I didn't see them in London, um, or did I? No, I don't think I did. I don't think you did because there's a bigger bike culture in London. Already. I'm talking about app accessed scooters. I mean, we are in the peak, I believe. <laughs> Um, scooters, scootering around American cities. And, 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 and there's quite a competition going right now. I mean, in one, in a couple of the cities, we saw like four or five different companies. You got Lime, you got uh, Bird, you got Lyft getting into it, you got Uber getting into it. Yeah. Then there was like two other ones, I can't even remember the names. Like Jump, Flip, Skip, and Some, Hop. Something like that. Roller Buddies. Roller Buddies uh, just doesn't fit on a scooter. Two wheels, one cup, I think was one of them. Um, I think it's two wheels, one foot. That's it, that was it, that's ours. Two wheels, no helmet, that's what they call me. <laughs> <laughs> because it, incidentally, that's another thing. Anytime, you know, first of all, you gotta download the apps for, for each one of these services. And then like the first time you download the app, you sign. <laughs> uh, you agree to you the terms. You agree to a lot of things and one of the terms is is that of course you will wear a helmet, but right. literally no one on any scooter at any time that we saw had a helmet on. Well, 
I mean, so the when we were in St. Louis, I mean, we 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 went to this barbecue place, and then we went to the the Gateway Arch, hmm. which I believe is six hundred and thirty feet tall. Well, that's a. I looked that up, and then I don't remember numbers, so I'm probably wrong. But I think I'm right because I feels, looked it up. It feels. I right. looked it up very recently. Well, we were going to go up there, but we didn't have time to um, to book a tour. You can take a freaking sideways or arch path elevator to the top of this thing, but we couldn't do that. So we just walked around the bottom of it, and we're walking around down there. And it's you got all these pavers, and it's like undulating terrain, just little hills, but there are some steps and there are some steps that then become undulating terrain and ramps. And as we're walking, it was me, Rhett and Britton, and I see these two girls, they were probably like 15, and um, they were careening in front of us on two of these scooters. And the girl in front, um, zips by us and then she turns around and she yells, don't go on the stairs! And that drew my eye to her. So I didn't actually see what happened, but you did. Well, the way that the train was set up, there was a blind spot essentially. So it just, from from the, your perspective, it just, you were gonna continue on straight ground, but really there was like a three, maybe two or three step drop she and 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 of, of concrete. Yeah, and the steps were such that the further left you were, the more steps there were to go down. And she just happened to choose a, a line that was like two or three steps, like two or three feet to the left, and it would have been five or six steps. Like it was. Anyway, did her, she take flight? Well, like you said, her friend said at the last minute, "Don't go off there" or whatever. And that was exactly the wrong thing to say because she basically dismounted in the air and the scooter landed really, really hard. She actually landed on her feet. It and could have been really, really and, ugly. And she landed on her feet and was like immediately like plop, 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 like running in a very awkward fashion. But she, I mean, she could have she hit her head on the, on the concrete and died, man. We could have witnessed the death. Well, I could have witnessed her friend witnessing the death because I was looking at the wrong girl. Well, and that's the main thing that you're that I'm thinking the whole time I'm on there. They go like 20 miles per hour and uh, eat faster than that if you're going downhill. And the wheels are relatively small. You know, there's not necessarily you're supposed to be riding in bike lanes when possible, but most American cities are not very aren't bike friendly, so right. there's very few bike lanes. A lot of people, people don't know sidewalks. where to go. They go on the sidewalks. They when they're in the street, there might be potholes. People don't have good balance. People aren't wearing helmets, and so there's this crazy thing that's happening where all these companies are competing against each other to try to win this market. Yeah, but at the same time, people are getting hurt. Well, when we were in Austin, there was this. Um, makeup woman and we happened to start talking to her about the scooters because we saw him around Austin and she said, yeah, my husband was on one and he went off a curb and fell over and hurt his leg and uh, really badly, like he was, he was in a lot of pain and the paramedics show up and after a while they're like, you're okay, just go home and um, he went home that night and he woke up in excruciating pain and she said that he like, was in so much pain that he started to go into shock. And so she took him to the emergency room and he had broken his femur <laughs> on a freaking scooter, guys. Yeah. And the helmet doesn't protect the femur, last time I checked. Well, if you get a femur helmet. That's what we need. So so uh, two wheels, one foot is gonna, uh, we're gonna figure out a way to like attach the helmet to the scooter and also have like femur pads. Right. I mean, you can really get hurt because you think you can ride a scooter, but you don't realize how fast these things can go. And also, you're tempted to just steer like left, right, left, right, inky, inky, inky. But you 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 really should steer by leaning. You need to be using your body weight. You, you got to be using your body weight, but it, that's not immediately intuitive. And it's I mean, if you start doing that, then you're doing the shaky, shaky, shaky thing, and then you're well, like going, you're, you're you're careening out of control. And people are locals hate these things. I mean, so when they we have were, to when we were in Nashville, um, it, it, that by that point, uh, Britain's friends had showed up. 
Uh, Jenna w uh, was with us at the time, so it was like, there was like six of us in a little pod going down br the street. Basically, the main drag in Nashville, and as, it, as we continued going down, we started realizing like, this has almost become a highway. Like, people are like turning off of this to get on the interstate, there's only a few stoplights, there's no bike lane, we're right up again, like we're going across a bridge and like the six of us in a line are kinda taking up the lane, and people are just laying on their horns. The locals hate us, and they should. And but we were doing the right thing because you're not supposed to be on the sidewalk, you're supposed to be like a bike. But they were just laying on the horn. I guess it was because some of us were like waggling. It goes beyond that though because I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to say don't be here. Like go on a less busy street. Wear a freaking helmet. You know, and and we yeah. we, we were talking to Go Brit back to whatever town you're from. Talking to Britain's friends and uh apparently in Raleigh, uh North Carolina, they were they've gotten rid of all of them. Oh really? They've just gotten rid of all the scooters is what we were told. I haven't hmm. been there to confirm this because they couldn't figure out how to regulate them and then the the companies were like, well screw it, we're, we're, we're not gonna be a part of this. See, I, I just don't know where this is gonna land because people are gonna, are, are getting hurt and they're gonna continue to get hurt. I personally, but when we, I love it. When we were I in, absolutely love it. Yeah so when we were in Columbus, I mean I looked out my hotel window and I saw a couple of people like we were downtown by like by the river and like there's like nice river walks on either side of it and I saw some people with scooters. I was like, bingo, we're gonna do it because we didn't do it in St. Louis. I just saw the girls almost, a girl almost eat it. And then the next morning here I am still thinking it's a great idea and you know what it was. Oh, it's so much fun. It was fun. fun. I mean when you're, when you're not just going on the surface streets like in a downtown area with a lot of traffic but you're on like a dedicated path and a relatively fresh one that doesn't have like a, a bunch of treachery to it. That was fun, man. The weather was great. It was yeah. just, it was beautiful. That be, was a be, high, a highlight of the trip was was scooting around, man. Yay! <laughs> being off of the road, I would say that being on a not busy road or being on like a park path. Park path is that is Peak scooter terrain, but you know what? I th I think I'm gonna start traveling with uh, a helmet. I got. Why are you laughing? I gotta get a little helmet, man. You laugh. You laugh now, but you're not gonna laugh when you when you don't remember how to laugh because you hit your head. There's something about being on a scooter though that makes me feel because I my feet are so close to the ground already. I feel like I can just like jump out of any ter any situation, any danger, and just immediately jump and be st standing up. Whereas like a motorcycle, you're going a lot faster. Yeah, you know, your feet are really close to the ground on a motorcycle too. But you can't just walk off of a, a motorcycle. If you're riding side saddle, you can. Yeah, I don't ride my motorcycle side saddle like anymore. I'm, you ride? How do you ride your horse? Side saddle? Backwards. I want to. <laughs> I don't want anybody sneaking up on me. I ride my horses backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't know I I don't know what the future of scootering is going to be, but I, I they can't tether the helmets to the thing because then that's a that's a hazard. You got what lice? Oh, lice too. Yeah, that's a lice hazard. Is that what you, is that what you mean by no, that? No, I mean like if there's a string, a tether, so that people won't walk away with the helmets. I think you need a helmet sharing app. Same company, different company. Different company. We should do the helmet sharing. So you, so you're gonna have to like walk to the helmet, and then, pe well, then, then the problem would people be scootering to the helmet. You gotta, you gotta, no, you gotta sign in. No, no, you know it's got to be the same company, and you can't. It's like one of those things that after you get a few D DUIs, you can't start a car without breathing into it. This is like you have to like step on. You have to like hit, hit. You, you gotta, you gotta bump head, your head. You gotta headbutt the scooter. With the helmet, so in order you got to get be, it going, or just be willing to headbutt the scooter really hard without a helmet to make it seem like. I think if they had a helmet that was like a zip tie, kind of not zip tie, but like a zip line, like it comes out from the the handlebars, and then you're kind of like loosely tethered to the thing. It's kind of like that sounds like it might be more dangerous. Kind of like it's got a like I like got a narrow roof on it. It's like, have you ever seen those bikes that would have like a shell on them? Yeah. Like an aerodynamic shell, like put, have one of those come off the handlebar, zoop, goes over your whole head. Then it's just like a little car. 
<laughs> That's no fun, you don't feel the breeze anymore. I wanna feel the breeze, that's half of it. Okay. Anyway, y'all gotta figure that out. And I don't know who's gonna win this, but yeah. I don't know if I would invest in, in my gut is that this is this is not sustainable. But if it ends up being sustainable, I think it I think it is. My gut says that um now that Lyft and, and apparently Uber is in this game, I feel like they're going to win because you already got that app. Yeah, cuz that, that the main barrier is like I got to download something. Man, I don't have good service here. But what? you get now so excited. Take pictures of my license. But I don't you, cra- travel with my license. I've never been so willing to download an app as when I was about to get on a scooter. I will say that. Like, when I'm about to get on a scooter, I'll download any app. I mean, it could be like a credit card n- number sharing app, like hackme.com app. I would download that. J- j- that's how excited I was and dead set on getting on that scooter. That's an interesting app. I would, I would agree to anything. I mean, I basically signed my life away. Yeah, I'm wearing a helmet. Wink, wink, <laughs> wink. You know, yeah, I'm hard headed. <laughs> and then people are taking them home and charging them up and making a little extra scratch. You know? Yeah, it's good for everybody. And um, they're not gas powered. Well, Technically, it's good for the. Maybe it's not too late. Maybe we the can get, Maybe we can get in on this mythical scooters. You know what? We make ours three wheeled, safer, safer. Shaped like it's shaped like a pyramid. It's double wheeled in the back. No, two wheels in the front, like a when a kid's learning how to ride a scooter. <laughs> yeah, like a spider. Yeah, and we market it to children. That's what we do. We're gonna do that, but first we're just gonna promote what we got, which is this hat. It's a GMM hat. It's got some camouflage to it. It's got some orange to it. It's got accoutrements. We also got mugs. The Ear Biscuits mug, it's beige. It's so good to drink out of. It's hefty. Once you once you get this thing, you'll be like, man, this is a high quality mug. Oh, Feldman wants me to say that it's cream. Well, I go with beige. I think beige is one of the most pleasing colors of nature. It is the color of most things. You know, when the world ends, when the universe finally just dissipates into nothingness, it will be dissipating into beige. Beige is the entropy of color. Beige is before all things and after all things, beige. I would, I would venture to guess before and after all things would be just blackness. No, it's beigeness, that, that's, mm. that's a common misconception. Well, I'm glad you said it straight because you had that knowledge. <laughs> beigeness, in the beginning. You know where to go. Was beigeness. Mythical.store. Rep your boys, drink, drink from the cup of biscuit. Um, okay, so the, a couple of interesting things about this tour. Now, as we have, as we've stated repeatedly, but it cannot be overstated apparently because even some of the VIPs who showed up to meet and greet us uh, after a few of the shows Multiple people would say something along these lines. Man, I I didn't know you guys played music. I mean, like I thought this was going to be like 2 hours of Willet burrito. Somebody said that specifically, yeah. Uh, and listen, like that would be a big burrito. Now, I do understand. We could do it and we would do it and we might do it. Yeah, you've given us a great not, idea, but that's like We didn't just do it. Not this year. Um, I think that it's a little we have a little bit of a branding problem, right? Because the thing that we're known for the most is Good Mythical Morning, and let's be honest, if you were to watch just a, a little highlight reel of what we do on the show, you might not come to the conclusion that these two idiots had any other talents other than we also not got being able to eat things. Yeah, I think someone said, I didn't know you guys were talented. <laughs> we got, and these are like, these are like fans paying to meet us. I mean, these are like true mythical beasts. I didn't know, you know, but things come out sideways when you're meeting somebody that you've watched a lot on the internet, so I just find humor in it, but I know they didn't mean anything by it. Well, but I'm like, and on top of that, uh, another thing I'll say is that, let's say that you're a fan of GMM and you've been watching that, and then, the, and then what you have seen of our other work is say, our really popular rap battles or other music videos that we made on YouTube, again, Anybody can make a music video. Anybody can sing along with the track. 
anybody can have their voice auto-tuned. Mm. So I think a lot of people are just like, oh, well, of course, yeah, you've done music videos, but to sit down and for almost two hours for us to do live instrument-based music is something that n a lot of people just aren't expecting. But again, as we explain um, at every show, one of the things that's really cool about it is that it's sort of a returning to the roots of what we we did before this whole before YouTube started. We were pr our comedy was primarily just funny songs that we performed live for people, and then we turned some of those into music videos, and that was sort of the beginning of our comedy career. So this is kind of going back to what started it all, and um, anyway, it, it's really fun to do. I'm 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 very glad that. This is what we decided to do when we now tour. And by the way, we are continuing to tour, so if you wanna come see us, retlinklive.com. Can I plug the dates? I should, plug since the I dates, mentioned man. it. Plug it. Las Vegas on June 21st, Salt Lake City, 22nd, Denver the 23rd, Milwaukee the 25th, Indianapolis the 26th, Detroit the 27th, Omaha the 29th, Minneapolis the 30th. Retlinklive.com, get your tickets. I'm. I just had such a good time because, you know, I really enjoy singing the songs that we've written over the years, and, um, but it also does capture a lot, and I think of of what people like about Good Mythical Morning, and that's the fact that we can kind of, you know, it's not scripted. We're, we're just kind of in between songs. We're just kind of cutting up and seeing what happens, and right. uh, on any given night, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, at the beginning. The songs were, we, we were a little more rusty than, by the time we got to Nashville, we kinda had the songs down and we weren't gonna forget lyrics or stuff like that. But like on the first night, one of the new songs, um, when you moved over to the piano, like yeah. you started playing it, then you never started singing and I'm like, he doesn't remember the lyrics. And all of a sudden you're like, I can't remember the words. And, right. it's, and that was the most fun part of the night because oh, it's like. for you. <laughs> It was, I mean. Real fun for you. When something goes wrong, it's like, okay, everybody in the whole place knows this was not planned, so now what are we gonna do? And so that's what's fun, is that when you you don't have to wig out, you can just say, you can just have fun with it. And that was fun. I had fun messing with you and not, I knew the lyrics, so I, would, I, would, I didn't want, I chose not to tell you and kind of make you squirm, but. I sat there and played the piano for what felt like five minutes. <laughs> It just was funny, the, man. Play the intro. People loved it. Oh, I know people loved it. I'm just saying because it's honest. I was like, I really don't know how to access what the first, what the first words of this song are. But like you said, by the time we got to uh, Nashville, the, we we had the songs figured out. I think the thing is, is that I don't mind, and actually, I look forward to, you know what's gonna happen in between the songs and what stories are we gonna tell and it's very, it's very loose and where is it gonna go or what, what kind of bit are we gonna just come up with in the moment. But I don't, I don't want all the bits to come from screw, Fail. screwing the songs up. Well, they didn't. And they didn't, they didn't. And, and uh, cause, I, cause I, again, I, I also, I have a lot more fun. The more I know the song, it frees you up to then. And then I can actually have good, enjoy have it. fun in the in the midst of it because you know it's like it's it's just one of those it's 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 a it's a little bit of a blessing and a curse that we get to do so many things, but because we do so many things, it isn't like we sit around and like rehearse, right? Our music all the time. We, we don't rehearse enough. We, but then we turn again. We turn the mess ups into okay. We can we can make fun of that happening and we can. We can kind of milk it for comedy, but and maybe we'll have. It's also a very safe. Space. Maybe we'll have. Um, I mean, my goal is for us to have at least another new song that no one has heard at all by the time we. Uh, yeah, in go, June, go, in June. go uh, out on the summer tour. But it's also great. I'm very grateful that it's such a safe space for us to perform because everybody is, even if they didn't know what to expect, they're a dedicated mythical beast, and there's or they're 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 there with someone who's already oriented to what's going on. So it's not like we have to win the crowd over. We just have to give them, we just have to have fun. And I think it was a lot of fun. And um, I, I, I can imagine how if you're, if touring is your first thing and you're trying to win over a crowd and trying to build an audience that way, it's like, that would be difficult. So uh, it's nice that we don't, oh, yeah. we don't have to do that. Well, but you know, speaking of 
uh, winning over a crowd who's not familiar with you. I mean, one of the things that made this tour uh, unique was Britain opening up for us. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, we talked about Britain a lot, Britain Buchanan, Link's cousin, uh, who is on The Voice and is living with Link and Christie now. Um, and we did. We honestly didn't know how that was gonna go because his songs are not, it's not comedy. Right. He's just like a legitimately great songwriter and musician and singer. And so we were like, well, we enjoy this. We think you'll enjoy it too. And you know that there's the family connection, but uh, we would we would kind of go out and watch, not go out into the crowd, but kind of go side stage and watch Britain perform. And it's like, thank you to all the mythical beasts who received him so warmly. But I'll say that you weren't doing it out of any sort of Obligation. obligation or pity. I think everyone was legitimate. For everything that I've seen on the internet, um, everybody was legitimately impressed because he's good. Yeah, and he did a good job winning winning people over with like the stuff that he would say in between his songs too. So yeah, we won't we won't spoil any surprises. Uh, I think I think we're going to talk a little bit more a little bit more about what Britain uh, does on tour on LTAT, but we so we won't get into that too much here. But that it, we also traveled with him. Yeah, so he was he was with us the entire time. Speaking of traveling, so we were. I mean, we have like the tour bus situation, and then on the tour bus, uh, you got the front part, and then you go back to the middle part, and there's these like, I call them coffins. You sleep in a coffin. They're like too high. On some buses, they're three high. Well, the, these were and you're, yeah, these were too high. On so thing. I mean, you can imagine the first time we did this, it was there were three high. So. You can't sit up in it, and I I can't even I can't lay all the way down. I, it's I, it's they, they don't make them six foot seven. These things are probably six two, six three. Uh, I could stretch. I could stretch out. I think they might at six. Foot. I, I think they might be just below my height. I think it might oh, yeah? be like six and a half feet plus the siding or whatever. So like six five. So how do you sleep in there? Well, not well. Because you couldn't to begin with, I'll say, uh, for a couple of reasons. I mean, not being able to stretch out. I sleep on my side, so I'm not at full height. You know, I sleep like a baby in the womb, and uh, like with your knees under your chin. I mean, if I can get them there, yeah, it's completely balled up, ready to for tornadoes and anything. Like in a tuck position. No, I, I sleep on my side, so I'm a little bit curled up. Uh, but even like in my bed, if I'm sleeping on my side, there's moments during the night where I'll kind of wake up and I'll just like, for a moment, just sort of stretch out completely to be just like. Just unfurl the flag, so to speak. Just to like remember my height, Length. you know? And uh, and then turn to the other side. So you can't do that. And, and also, I'm such a light sleeper that, pothole, I wake up. Fast turn, I wake up. Oh yeah? That's not fun. Uh, but I did get yeah. better. I did get better uh, I, on, the, I, on the second night. I like sleeping in a confined space. I mean, I don't know, something about it, I just felt like I felt like a cozy little child. If it was a little bit longer and we weren't in moving, it would be great. Once we That's arrived, morbid thought. Once we arrived to, the, to the destination and then they kinda let you wake up on your own whenever you happen to wake up and the bus, is, I'll sleep indefinitely in that scenario. Well, but you didn't. Well, I, I mean, that first morning there, I woke up and I realized, I started waking up and realized we're not moving. And you're like, your your coffin has a curtain, so it's like pretty dark in there even if it's bright outside, which it turns out it was because I looked out my curtain. And then I got a text from Jenna and she was like, instructions are on the the counter when you wanna come into the hotel, wherever, I, and I assume where everybody else already was because I didn't hear anything. And then, so I got out, no one was on the bus. And then I look in Britain's curtains closed, and I like I didn't open the curtain because I didn't know what position or state he might be in in, in terms of clothing. So I just poked the curtain, and I did hit something. So I'm like, oh, he is in there. And I was like, time to get up. It was 11:30. <laughs> we were Britain and I were the only two people on the bus, and then we like we oriented ourselves and um, we go to exit the bus, and Britain like goes down the steps and he's like, turns the doorknob, it doesn't doesn't respond. And then he's like shaking on the, I was like really pulling on the lever and I'm like, well hold on, don't break the door. We're, and he's like, we're locked in, man. And I'm like, what? 
No, we're not just, you know, and we start, and you look at the front of this bus, which, which we don't know anything about, and there's buttons, every, it's like the cockpit of an airplane. There's buttons everywhere. And so we start pushing all of them. <laughs> and we push the ones that look like they have something to do with a door. Right. And I heard something click around the door, but then it still wouldn't open, like here, and then I'm over there, like putting all my weight onto it. We get, we, we were locked on the bus for, for a day, <laughs> the whole day. Um, no, we eventually got off, but that was our first bus experience. I like sleeping on the bus, but I don't like I don't like being confined and not being able to exit the bus. That's a little disconcerting. Well, that raises an interesting question: Are there other exits? Is there an exit in the back? Because there should there should be exits. Because what if there's you a think about fire? this now? What if there's a fire on the bus? There, there should be multiple exits. I on guess the, on, we need an orientation. Like there sh- isn't there like a there's, I mean, there's a obviously there's like a exit in the back of a school bus, there. But it's a room in the back of this thing. There's exits on the roof of a school bus, and every window is an exit. Like if a school bus like lays on its side or something, you can go out the top of a school bus. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah the you, window. You can get out of a school bus a lots of different ways. And oh, it's, every it, which way. And you don't need a button. Need no button. Maybe we should be traveling in a school bus. I'm just saying. I well. You do have me thinking that now I need to start checking for exits. I'm a little worried. That's why Christy should have come with me. I know that's the first thing she looks for, is the exit out of everything. Um, I mean, not our relationship. We're doing great. Hmm, interesting. We played at Columbus that night once I got out of the bus and got off the scooter. Um, that was fun, that was a great show. Um. I mean, I, 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 in general, I'll just shout out thanks to all the crowds everywhere, super supportive. And then w- when we do the meet and greet afterward, um, it's, it's always special because you kinda get to hear a, just a little bit from fans in terms of how they watch the show, what, what watching us means to them. And it always blows me away how, it, the nature of our show being daily and I guess the fr- our friendship and I mean there's a lot of intangibles that like being on the inside, you, it's it's just hard to get perspective on how people enjoy the show or what it, what it means to them and helps them get through hard times and they can count on it and stuff like that. So it's it's really helpful to to get out there and meet the people, you know, to press the flesh. It really puts things in perspective. Well, but you, I mean, everything except that last part. I understand. I mean, you, yes, I don't. I press the flesh is not the right word. You can't. That's that was a political term right. that you can't use anymore. That was that. Well, that was first handshakes, and we that do. Was, we we, we don't. Know, if you want to hug, we hug. Whatever. What, we let you initiate whatever you want to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that so flesh is pressed, but I mean, it's upon initi their initiation. Yeah, I just don't like to use flesh and pressed in the context of the meet and greet. I just. That's I, true. I just kind of would like to abandon that terminology. Yeah, let's abandon it. Let's let's lock it in the bus. Um, but I, you know, I did see some people on Twitter talking before this this run, and they were saying, um, you know, I just I don't know. I don't know. I'm nervous. I don't know what to say, and and I think people will have a tendency to feel like they have to have some sort of some something prepared or as if they're like auditioning to be the perfect mythical beast in that moment and that's not what it's about at all. I mean, you know, what you, whatever you wanna do. I mean, we have one girl who sang for us. We had uh, another guy who performed a rap and, for us. You know, and those are awesome. It's we, hilarious. If you wanna do that, do that. I mean, it was supposed to be funny and we it was. Don't, we don't encourage everyone to do, to do that because, I mean, we'd be there for seven hours if everyone had a performance. We'd like for everyone to, <laughs> to perform some sort of Bring your talent. Uh, but ultimately what I'm saying, and some people are like, you know what? I just, I'm, I'm gonna hand you this note because this is everything that I want to say. And I don't, and I, and it, I, it's more than I have time to say in this time. And then some people are just like, hey, I just want a picture. Whatever you want it to be, just know that like, we're not, like the way that we approach this is we are 100% grateful. Like it's just, we are in a attitude of gratitude, a stance of mm, some, something that rhymes with stance. Like we're basically just 
humbled that you guys come to the show, that some of you want to spend a little time with us and get a picture, and we're just happy that you're there. You don't have to say or do anything. You're not fitting any particular expectation. So if that makes you feel less nervous about it, then go with that because we're not we're not thinking about it in that way. In fact, you know, I I I, I heard there was one girl in one of the shows who 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 actually backed out of the line right. at, uh, before she got to the end. Uh, and I think we're we're going to end up sending her something. Uh, it's in her all the stuff that she would have gotten uh, in the in the meet and greet line. But it's kind of nerve. wracking I understand that some people deal with anxiety. It is nerve wracking. I man. get it. It's nerve wracking to stand in a line to meet somebody. Oh, I, I because, totally get that because it's. I mean, you can see it. The line just kind of move along, and then all of a sudden, you're like the next person. I remember um, a few years back when Dan TDM came to Long Beach, and like Lincoln was a fan of his. And I was like, I can get you, I can get you in to see him, man. I got connections. And um, so we went in the meet and greet line, and we're in the line, and I realized that I was nervous. I was like, why am I nervous? Just just by virtue of being in a line with a bunch of people who are like also nervous, it's like contagious. Yeah. And it just you build this expectation. It's like there is this moment of Okay, we're gonna shake hands, and I'm I'm supposed to say something. I have to say something. If I don't say anything, that's that could be weird, you know. Yeah, but even the people who don't say anything, but it's, it's not weird. For everything us. like that does make me like, anxious. We're, like, so I mean, yeah, I'm not, and I'm not saying at all. Don't be be nervous. I'm just saying, just be yourself. If yourself is nervous, then be nervous. If yourself is excited, then just be excited. And we're, there's no there's no judgment at all from us. And I know, listen. We're bigger than you th- realize. Physically. I am, I know that I am in- intimidating physically. People are f- sometimes afraid to look at me because I think I'm just like, I'm, I look like. It's you know, odd. I look like Detlef Shrimp or whatever that NBA basketball player was. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm a huge person. Uh, I have a lot of hair on my face. You know, I look like a hawk. <laughs> You're weird. I've been, like... I've been called a falcon by a drunk man in a van one time. You look like a foul man. man. Um, you look I, like a tall, deadlift shrimp looking falcon. But I'm very soft and inviting. You know, I have sweaty hands. You can shake them if you want. That didn't make it any less weird. <laughs> uh, we should talk about hot chicken. Mm. So we get to Nashville and we had a little more time in Nashville because we had to, like a one day break and um, um, man, by the time I got in line, at, we decided to go to Hattie B's even though mythical chef Josh told us to get hot chicken from Bolton's spicy chicken and fish. Mm-hmm. Um, and even though Wikipedia says that Prince's is the originator of hot chicken. And we didn't go there. We, we were kind of, Starving, delirious, and closest to Hattie B's. And it also, we tend to be very dependent upon Yelp. And that a lot so of many people, Yelp reviews. A lot of people love don't like it. that. Don't, I mean, don't like when you're that dependent on Yelp, but like, I just, you know, like 4,000 reviews, four and a half stars, like, you know it's gonna be good. And when we get there, we scootered there. Of course we did. And then. We nearly died. We're there for a couple of minutes. And then we hear, well, it's 45 minutes from where you are in line. Yeah, it was, I, like, being, I, it was like being it's on Space Mountain. I showed up starving. I was like, I don't, I don't wait this long for, I just don't, I, it doesn't add up. So I started looking for Bolton's and be like, we can travel to Bolton's via scooter, eat and be done and still come back and not have gone through this line probably. Right, but that, to me, that's all part of the experience of going to a place like that and I will say, I do think it's worth noting that, you know, hot chicken has been exported from Nashville, and of course, it's in L.A. and there's a number of places that serve it. Howlin' Rays probably being the most popular, and I have seen the Howlin' Rays line before, but neither of us, and I don't know if we were just holding out for Nashville or just happened, Mm -hmm. you know, circumstantially, had never been there. We had never had hot chicken. Well, you know, we did our Instagram stories from the line, and then we finally get up there and we order, and it's. I, 
You know what, I'll agree with you. I actually ended up saying, I'll say it again, I'm glad that I waited 45 minutes and I kind of learned my lesson. It really, I mean, you talk about getting nervous in a line. I mean, I in this type of line, when the only thing you gotta do is pay and eat food, boy, that's a great scenario. I mean, mm-hmm. you, it's a great payoff and it, and you're talking like Magic Mountain or Space Mountain? Are you saying we should serve hot chicken in the meet and greet? I'm saying in contrast to that, you, you don't have to say anything besides order what you want at the end and then it really- You gotta be, pick your spice level But my though. point is the, lot, the weight made it taste that much better. Oh yeah. And we both- Delayed elected, gratification, man. It's the spice of life. It's the hot chicken of life. And so I, you know, I don't like spicy foods. I've been burned pun intended, um, from the show, so now anything that's spicy to me is like, it's triggering physically, so I start to feel a little nauseous, mm. but I I didn't wanna just try mild or medium. I'm like, if it's called hot chicken, I you should order get, a get, hot. Get hot. And, and for those of you who, who aren't familiar with it, because I had an idea of what, I thought the hot chicken was fried chicken with hot sauce on it. Like yeah. basted on it. Kind of like uh, a hot wing. But it is not that. It is chicken that has uh, spice actually in the, the breading, the, first of all. So that's the first thing that happens is so if you were to like peel back the skin, you would see like a little red layer of spice that has is part of the, uh, so it gets all the way onto the chicken. And then on top of that, depending on what spice level you get, they add a dry rub. Now I'm sure there's some places that do a sauce, but these places do a dry rub on top of, so it's basically like a powdery thing. It's not, I think there might be some sauce as well on Hattie B's. I couldn't really there's a tell. Little, there's a dryness and a wetness to it, but there's definitely a redness to it that makes it a bit intimidating. And but the, I was so hungry. But the levels were southern which means no spice, and yes, someone in our group who will remain nameless, but he's one of Britain's friends, that's what he got. No one who worked for us. He's also a Carolina fan, so it all adds up. Um, the next the next level is mild, and then medium, and then hot, and then damn hot, and then shut the cluck up. Those are the levels. And we all went with hot. hot. So Jenna got hot. We got hot, Britain got hot. And let me tell you, it was hot. But let me tell you something else. It tasted great. Like the hotness tasted great. So much flavor. And it was it was big and juicy. Oh, it was so good. I mean it was And you you got the dark I love a good I got love a good food experience, man, you know. And it I, I think it's turned me back on the hotness. When I'm when I'm riding back home, coming back, we landed in LA, it was it's an hour drive to get back to the studio, to get in our cars, I found myself on Yelp looking at the hot chicken places around here. And there's quite I'm a like, few. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm back on the spicy train. We might have to have a hot chicken taste test Instagram story like when we went around and tried to find the best taco. We oh. might have to do that with hot chicken. But I did not order like the upper echelons of hotness well, so like I, you did. So you can get a tender or a wing uh, by itself for $2 extra and add that to your order. So a lot of people do this just as a novelty kind of thing. So I, I had a show, you know? I, I, and I also I feel like I've eaten the world's hottest pepper twice. So I was like, um, you know what? I'm just gonna do a damn hot tender. And then Britton, you know, he's 19. His body can take anything at this point. He got a shut the cluck up wing. No, a tender, he got a shut the cluck up uh, tender. Mm-mm. And, um, if you if you were following along on our Instagram stories, Red MC and Link Lamont, oh, you would have you. Se- you would have seen all this happen. And Britain's, I guess you could Britain, shout his out. Britain Buchanan, follow him on Instagram too, because the action's happening over there when we're traveling. It was funny because he, he ate that thing. He thought he was going to be all right, and then his his face just started crying. His eyeballs just sweated. Right, he cried quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. The damn hot. Tender was damn right. hot, but it was like, as I was eating it, I was like, I could have gotten the sandwich this way. Well, he, he but, te- and, and I would have been okay. He texted us and said that um, his dad looked into it because he tried to talk his dad into eating one. He said that it had 
Um, the top, the top, shut the clock up. Yeah, it had uh, scorpion pepper and ghost pepper in the in and, the, and habanero, equal parts of oh all gosh. three. And it's like a powder, which is incidentally, it's like the heat is super intense, but it dissipates more quickly because it doesn't have an oil base to it the way that it does. It doesn't have an oil carrier the way that sauce does, because sauce will get into your skin because literally like, you know like when you you get like essential oils and you put them into like a olive oil carrier so they'll like be yeah. carried further and they go into your skin. That's why eating the pepper straight because you've got that oil and then even worse when you eat a sauce, mm -mm. it sticks with you, you feel it later, you feel it in your stomach, you feel it on the way out and it's still incredibly hot in each stage. Something about the dry rub makes this, it's like a flash bang of hotness but for me, an hour later, I'd forgotten that I ate something so Well, hot. even when you're eating it, I highly recommend eating it with the slaw, which was great, you and the pickle. Creamy. The pickle and the like the bread that comes you with it. You got every creamy side. Oh yeah. You got the mac and cheese, potato the potato salad, salad, and the slaw. I did. And I ended up getting collard greens and beans, of course, the beans are good. Uh, that doesn't help with the heat But though. they actually, the collard greens had this like enhancing effect on, because of the vinegar, it, like it yeah, enhanced the heat. that's tough. So anyway, Hattie B's was excellent, but of course, because we didn't wanna come back and face Josh, and also Josh made an incredible dinner reserv uh, dinner recommendation uh, to for a place called Husk that we went, uh, oh, that gosh. was. gosh, that was amazing. One of the best meals shout we out ever had. To, shout out to all you people working at Husk. Uh, the people in the kitchen knew who we were and um, started sending out stuff that we didn't order and we, they stuffed us like pigs. Oh gosh. They stuffed us with pigs. Yeah. It was and, crazy. And, and every, it was amazing. First of all, the waitress described the items and I, I feel like she spoke for like 12 minutes unbroken describing the different items and she would say things like, well first we take this and we put it in under ashes for 12 hours and then we take it and we rub it across a pig's back until it squeals and then we capture the squeal and we put it in a bottle and we sprinkle it on top of the collards and then we take the collards and we run them into the past and then yeah. we bring them out of the past once they have the essence of the old days and then we bring them to the table and then we grind them up and sprinkle them on the other foods that you will be enjoying. I mean, I had a freaking whiskey with ham in it. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy, man. What it was a, so good. What a night. And it was, it's in an old uh, house. It's in an old house that apparently is haunted. So, Husk, well, you was, go to Husk. It was a surgeon from like the Civil War. Civil War, yeah. But so Josh told us to go to there, so we felt like we had to follow his recommendation. But we also felt like we couldn't come back until we went to Bolton's hot Chicken and fish, right. hot, yeah, spicy chicken and fish, that's what it's called. And they got a cockatrice breathing fire, well they got a chicken breathing fire out front. Again, Instagram, we, yeah. we showed you this. Um, they've got a sign when you order there and it says, um, basically proceed at your own risk, do not touch your eyes or babies when eating our hot chicken and fish. And do not touch babies. And someone had said, "Think about that. How, how bad would you feel if, like, you get you get you sauce a baby? Oh man, I'm I sorry. I just sauced your baby. Well, it's really dry rubbing a baby. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to dry rub your baby. <laughs> dry, I mean, if if you if you've got a nasty habit of dry rubbing a baby in the eyes, <laughs> do not go to Nashville. Yeah, right. You're not even invited. Mm -mm. Like you cannot. Yeah. First of all, that's a habit you need to break. What are you doing touching baby's eyes? Yeah." Like if if a baby's got an eye booger, who cares? Just let them have it. It's actually probably a good thing. It's like a protective layer at the corner of the eyes. Yeah. You don't need to. I think in general you shouldn't touch the face of a baby. Don't touch baby's faces. You know. Eyes, like oh look at that baby so cute. Can I rub its eyes? What? Mm-hmm. And to have to put up a sign, I mean, what does that say about the people in Nashville? It means that a lot they, of baby they, eye touchers. They've been dry rubbing babies. Eye touchers. They're, they, they, they were dry rubbing babies left and right before they put that sign up. The, so good for the baby. The though. spice levels at Bolton, are it's a different scale. We were told this. There's no spice and then there's light or something like that. Then there's mild 
Then there's medium, then there's hot. But they said whatever you got at Hattie B's is what we were told by two different people, go one level, level lower. Down. I'm grateful that we did. So we got, so yeah, and they were right. So it's a different, it's hot, a different experience. Hot there was medium at Bolton's and they don't have a sandwich there. It's just the fried chicken, similar sides. I tried the beans, actually, well, I'll just go ahead and say that not just Josh, but m most Nashvillians that we ran into and said we had been to Hattie B's, they had this disappointed look on their face. They were like, oh, of course you guys did the touristy thing. You should really go to Bolton's or you should go to Prince's. Mm -hmm. Guys. And we did. Well, we went to one and it, it's not it, the, it's Bolton's good. was really good. Really good, really good and the atmosphere was like so authentic. It's like cinder block buildings that look like, um, look like bunkers almost. It looked like I was eating in a barbecue bunker. Right. Really, it was really rustic. But we gotta say. We both enjoyed Hattie B's more. I mean it was just, yeah. it was more of a distinct thing. Now they do have, they do have hot fish. You can get all the same uh, spices on the fish at Bolton's and so we got a hot fish. So we went all the way to hot and they and they got white fish, they got catfish, they got grouper, we got the white fish because it was at the top of the menu. We figured that was the one that was suggested. I would recommend doing both though. Yeah, yeah, you should try that. I did because I've never had a spicy fish like that. But it we, was very good. Um we should skip to the rhyme because um because we're at this point in our conversation we haven't gotten to it, but yeah it, being a fan of old country music and you know, we went through the country music hall of fame and took our time, had a great time. They had an Outlaws exhibit, which was amazing. But in a lot of the pictures that you'll see throughout the Country Music Hall of Fame, you'll see people performing at the Ryman Auditorium because it was the home of the Grand Ole Opry for 30 years. Um, yeah. And which, lots of Which was the distinct, um, it, it was the place where country, country music legends were, were made and certified. Yeah, so basically talking, anybody who's anybody in country music, like old country, yeah, has played, and then of course Hank Williams, all the new acts have played there as well Elvis because Presley it's still got this there. incredible uh, history. And but but the the Ryman Auditorium was originally built as a as an actual church, like a revival uh, venue, and the and you so, can totally tell when you go in there because it's all pews, it's all a big circle. It's a huge balcony that follows the same semicircular pattern, and then you've got the stained glass windows. I mean, super famous. It's f super famous for the history, but it's also super famous for the acoustics because it's all wood. Yeah, and it's just and it's and, and the and the circular thing. It's just like it's the, one of the best sounding places. And I'm that doing you can play music. I'm doing some research when we're in D.C. I'm, I'm like I want to I want to see Merle playing here. And I mean, he first played there in, as he was starting his career in 1967, but then um, Johnny Cash, who was a member of the Grand Ole Opry and was then kicked out, and you can see that in, in the movie Walk the Line, he was, he was uh, let go, but then he came back when he had his own television show, the Johnny Cash Show, he insisted that it be filmed at the Ryman Auditorium, at, mm -hmm. the, same, at the home of the Grand Ole Opry, so they would film his show there, and I mean, Johnny Cash is bringing Bob Dylan on his show. I mean, this is this is an amazing institution within an institution, just his show. And he had, as Merle was gaining popularity, he comes on the show and the, seeing the two of them interact is like, it just gives me goosebumps thinking about that footage. But one story in particular is amazing is that, um, of course, Merle was uh, Merle was in prison, and just like the lyric in Mama Tried, he did turn twenty one in prison. He wasn't serving life without parole, but fifteen uh, years or something like that. Um, and Johnny Cash knew this, but uh, he encouraged Merle to talk about it openly, his time in prison, which he hadn't done. Now, some people knew that he had been in prison but it was on the Johnny Cash show on the stage that we performed on that Merle in a conversation with Johnny Cash told the world for the first time 
that he was um he was a prisoner. He he was a he was an ex-con. Mm-hmm. And not only that, he told it in the context of the story of when Johnny Cash on on many occasions would go and perform concerts at prisons, Folsom Prison concert is, is famous album, but so is his San Quentin uh, performance. But he performed at San Quentin a number of times and one of those times, Merle Haggard was in the audience Mm -hmm. as a freaking inmate and he's like telling that story. So it's basically his coming out that hey, I was an ex-con and blowing people's minds that Johnny, I was at your concert as an inmate and so, and to know that happened on that stage just kind of blew my mind and then I realized, man, I'm getting nervous. Well, I I was I was already nervous <laughs> before we went to the Hall of Fame. You know, because first of all, everyone who we talked to, if we say we're playing the rhyme, like, well, you're playing the rhyme? Like, like yeah. you're, you're going to this sacred place and I'm also thinking about the thing that it is that we do which is we're not we're not country musicians. I mean, we're gonna be we're gonna be acting like fools up in this place. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're playing music, but it's stupid in a lot of ways. We got a lot of testicle jokes. Yeah, and so and we've got a whole rap set, which feels weird. Which feels a little out of place in the rhyme. But so in seeing all that footage, you know, and people who made their debut there, and the and because one of the cool things about the Country Music Hall of Fame, in addition to like the memorabilia. Uh, the archival sort of stuff, um, or the artifacts, is all the video that they have in there. You right. Know? They've got so they got all these this like you said the footage of the conversation on the Johnny Cash show with Merle, but so much of that and so many pictures are like that's the Ryman, that's the Ryman, that's the Ryman, and then I kept saying like we're playing there tonight, we're, and I started thinking a couple of things. I was like, a, I'm way more nervous than I usually am before a show. And two, we had decided to play two Merle songs, two, uh, two of our favorite Merle songs. Which is something we never done. We don't cover anybody's songs uh, and we've we've never performed Merle's songs publicly that I can remember. Right, and so you know, we did, we, we did one that is a, a really popular old school Merle song and then one that's a little bit of a deeper cut. And uh, I was thinking, I might cry. Oh. I was like, I, I don't want, I you know, I don't wanna cry during this thing because yeah. I can't cry and still continue to sing. I'm not one of those people who can like, you know. Cry sing? Cry sing. Some people can. Kinda like Vince Gill. I, <laughs> he seems like he's always cry singing. I, I, it, my, I, my voice would break and so I was like, I don't, I don't want that to happen so, you know, I, I don't know how I'm gonna take my <laughs> mind off that. But a few things about the show I mean, first of all, thankfully we did have everything down from a musical standpoint by the right. time we got there. It did sound like we could hear ourselves really well and you kind of, you sort of feel the power of the of the music kind of going out and coming around that circle and coming back to you. And also, you can hear every single thing that is being uh, the the crowd reaction is so immediate because they're right there on you, and it's a, it's twenty two hundred people. It's a small small venue, and they're kind of on top of you in a lot of ways because you've got that huge balcony. Yeah, and so it, the furthest person from you is still relatively close, and it makes such a big difference. I mean, in the little bit of touring that we've done, it's like every venue is different, and it and you never know exactly what you're going to get and what crowd is going to show up. But everything lined up. I mean, the crowd was so boisterous and responsive. Oh yeah. You know, I had somebody. I don't know how we got to this. Like me asking for antibacterial soap, and then somebody's like throwing hand anti- sanitizer hand sanitizer up at me, and like uh, I, I I emptied the entire bottle that she threw to me into my hand, and then I didn't know what to do with it, and like we came up with something. It was a lot of fun, man. Everybody was just love. Everybody was having a good time. So by the time in the middle of the set when we 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 performed Silver Wings, you felt like you weren't going to cry because people t- like it was. It, uh, people said that they cried. It was, and I was like, yes. It was very very emotional for me, like playing bu- both right. that and then Driftwood and played. We played Driftwood with Britain. He got out there and killed the solo. 
uh, the guitar solo, and it was emotional for yeah. sure. But I didn't think that I was gonna like break down at that moment. I, I, so the show just went on. It was great, and we got to that last song that we sing, which is a little bit of an emotional, it's funny, but it's got an emotional quality and tone to it. Yeah. The, the song that we closed the show out with. And you knew this, most people probably didn't pick up on the fact that I like flubbed two lyrics. I mean, we ended up like just changing in the moment one lyric that was from a different part of the song and then there was one part where I didn't come in but you sang that part, whatever. Which by this point in the, in the tour wasn't typical, especially right. that song. And I told you later, was I was happening? like, I was so in the moment and and thinking that like, I cannot believe how much fun this is. I cannot believe how good this is. You know what I'm saying? Not good like, I can't believe how good we are, just how good this is Sa all lining up. Yeah, you were savoring it, man. I think that's great. And I, yeah. I lost the ability to be, to be in the song because I was so in the, Moment. It's like I kind of left my body for a second and took a little flight around the Ryman and communed with the the spirits of old country, <laughs> and then came back in to my body and was like, "Oh, I should be singing." <laughs> yeah, it was magical, man. I I mean, it, was it the peak of our career? Um, yeah, I mean, it hasn't gotten any better than that for me personally. Well, it was two days ago. No, I'm I'm saying, in every, people are like, "What's the best oh. moment in your career?" Oh wow! I cannot yeah, I, think of any time where I felt as fulfilled in what we get to do as, right. as is in that moment. But because the other things that I mean, you put out the internet video, and it's just like you can only be so fulfilled by like the response to the comments. I mean, and you can if you make. If you craft a documentary or a series or anything and you like screen it and then people, you're like watching people from the back of the room and then they're clapping, it's like that is very thrilling. Um, but it's not the same as performing. I mean, as having that moment of all the faces are staring back at you and you're like, I'm savoring this like the, like the first bite of hot chicken I ever had. Yeah. You know, you never have, it, I mean, you can read about hot chicken. You can make analogies about hot chicken at the end of podcasts. Right. Um, but until you eat the hot chicken on the stage of the Ryman, mm -hmm. oh shoot, that would have been peak. Mm -hmm. That's, we, we blew no, it. That would have been too much. That would have been yeah, sensory been overload. That's gonna be our next tour. I mean, that's what people want the anyway, right? The hot chicken right? tour? Yeah, we're just gonna get on stage and eat hot chicken. <sighs> well, and that's another thing. I'm glad you brought that up. Not the hot chicken, but the eating thing. Because you know me, and we've talked about this before. It's like another reason that it's so fulfilling to me. It's like, okay, it's cool when we like, it's like, oh, we got to, oh, there's 15 million people subscribed to Good Mythical Morning. And that's awesome. And it's, and you know what? It's why people show up at our freaking show. Dude, let's be honest. It's why people can show up and watch us sing. They're not, sh they're not showing up to watch us sing uh, Primarily, most people because they've seen us sing, they've seen us do weird stuff on the internet and they wanna come hang out with us. But because I truly believe that we, you know, we've crafted something. Like, we have crafted a show that I feel good about artistically and creatively. And again, that's the thing that kinda gets me going, right? It's obviously I love the stuff that's not planned and the humor that happens in the moment and the things that make that particular show unique. But the thing that really gets me going is like sitting down and over the course of a like labored process, creating something special that then is crafted with the real time reception of an audience in mind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and it's, and it's very rewarding. And when then being it comes able together. to go out there and actually execute it and see the real time, feel the real time reaction from an audience in a place that's so special. The, the combination of those things and the way that it came together, I was just like, it doesn't get any better than this. I mean, like, we could, ho hopefully we'll continue to do great things. Hopefully we've got bigger and better things ahead of us. Um, 
and there's other creative things that we want to do. But regardless of how well those things go and how well they're received, it can only match. In my mind, it can only match the way I felt at the Ryman. I That's agree I with feel. that. Yeah, yeah, I feel that way too. I'm, I'm just, and it again going out there and doing a show. It puts everything else we've done in perspective because we wouldn't be able to do it if it weren't for the other things. But, um, I'm grateful for the experience because of everything you said, and also because it, it just puts it, it, it gives us perspective that we can't have when we just sit behind our desk. Yeah, yeah, and, and like we say we say at the shows, you know, it's like, there's there all kinds of amazing things that have, uh, all the, the interactions that we have with people online are in, invaluable and amazing and uh, in, in volume much greater, you know, there's just way more of them because it's the nature of the internet. But there is just something different about being in a room full of mythical beasts. It's like we just don't get to experience that. Like we 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 make this podcast, we do the show, we do those other things, and people experience it on, uh, on this regular basis and have these special connections, and then we hear about them retrospectively, and that's really special. But to be in the same room while it's all happening and the immediate feedback, um, and I feel like it's, we've got a very First of all, our audience is, is very eclectic in a lot of ways in terms of like just where people are from, their background, their ages. But there's there's also something very um, uniform about the way the, of people who are just mythical, you know what I'm saying? And so there's a lot of like-minded people in the same room who are just like connecting, in a, not just with us but with each other. Being in that in that atmosphere is just special. Yeah, so again, I, I, I wanna thank you for, um, if you've come out to one of our shows, thank you, and I invite invite you if you haven't, to check out Rhett and Link Live. Um, all of this isn't a promotion for our show. I mean, it's an inadvertent promotion, that's why I'm just gonna, I'll plug it again, rhettandlinklive.com. Um, I'm also, I got Jenna to record our sound check for um, the Merle cover with Britain I have that, so I'm, I'm gonna post that on the society. I'm gonna get that posted on the society. So that wasn't, that's the sound check, not from the Ryman, but from DC, because we, we didn't have a lot of time to check at the Ryman, so we had to practice it. It sounds good, because we were still learning it. It don't matter, I'll, po I'll post it there on, on the society for Okay, so if it doesn't sound good, it's just a little treat. Yeah. Um, Okay, I got it. I, anything else that we wanna say before I give, give a Give me a wreck, wreck, man, give us a wreck. Okay, it's your so turn. I'm gonna give a wreck. Um, this is one of those things that many, many months behind when everyone was talking about this thing, but if you're like me, you didn't see it originally. Um, and I, I watched this movie on the plane, and so I'm gonna do uh, a wreck of Bo Burnham's Eighth Grade. Um, for those of you who have not taken the time to see this movie, I just highly recommend it. It's just, there's something about it that's it's just so visceral, like, the the way that he puts you into the experience of middle school in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable. And I don't ever feel that way when I watch stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's like people talk about, I can't watch that because it makes me feel uncomfortable. And I, and I wasn't about to stop watching it, but he's so effective. And uh, the, the, the lead actor in this, um, what her name is, something Fisher, what her name is. No, I don't know what her name is. Look that up, because I want to get that right. The, the the lead actor, the lead actress in, uh, in eighth grade. The way that, she, I mean, she's incredible. She just nails it so hard. Hmm. And uh, so it's just really cool to see somebody that we knew from way back, uh, you know, we hung out with Bo Burnham at YouTube Live back in 2008, seven? Probably eight. And uh, he was just a YouTuber, man. And he goes off and writes and directs this incredible film. So I know many of you have probably seen it, but a lot of you, are, probably more of you are like me and you just didn't watch it the first time uh, it came out. I just highly recommend it. What's her name? Elsie Fisher. Elsie Fisher. Elsie Fisher. All right, thanks she's for gonna, that, Rex. She's gonna go on and do uh, uh, even bigger things. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with us and uh, 
we'll speak at you again next week. We'll give you another biscuit for your ears. Yeah, maybe next week will be the peak of our careers. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.